Hello, I would like to welcome you to lecture 25 of 2FH3. In this lecture, we'll um, talk about magnetic energy and magnetic circuits. We cover chapter 8 from the book of Sadiqo, page 365 to 375. Um, the expression for the magnetic energy uh, given the book of Sadiqo, I didn't like the way it was derived. Uh, it was derived in a very, um, uh, in a very unclear way. So I would rather give you a more general derivation that you'll find uh, more understandable and be very consistent with what we discussed so far, but it required the use of Maxwell's equations. So um, we, we studied so far that curl E is equal to zero. Uh, this is for the static case, but in general, when the, everything is, change, is changing with time, currents are changing with time, curl E is equal to minus partial B partial T, where B is a magnetic flux density vector. And we'll be proving that this is called actually Faraday's law, and uh, we'll be discussing that next week. Um, uh, so we call this one the curl E is a vector, partial B partial T is a is a vector. So we call this one displacement magnetic current. We, this is how we call it. We call it. We give it the symbol mu d, and the mu d is displacement magnetic current. Now we know so far from our study from Ampere's law that curl H is equal to the current enclosed. And the current enclosed can be one of two things, a current source, and embrace the current source like an antenna, the current flowing through an antenna, it's coming from a source, it's an embrace the current source, or conduction current which is equal to sigma E. But Ampere's law in its current form is not, is not complete, because in the dynamic case, when everything is changing with time, with time, curl H would be equal to the embrace the current coming from sources, plus the conduction current, which is equal to sigma E, plus another term, which we call displacement current, which is partial D partial T. This is really the current flowing inside capacitors. Inside the capacitors, there is only a displacement current. There is no conduction current. We give this symbol, this, uh, this current here, the symbol GD. So these are the two laws governing um, electromagnetics. And we talk about two other laws in differential form and other laws in, 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 in integral form as well. Remember, all these are time varying quantity. A changes with time, B changes with time, H, J, I, J, C, D. All of these are time changing quantities, but at any instant of time and at any position in space, they are related to one another by these, by these differential equations. What we will do, they will the dot product the first equation with H, with the vector H, and you don't borrow the second equation with the vector E, and then you subtract them. When you do that, you get H dot curl E minus E dot curl H is equal to minus H dot mu D, the equivalent displacement, magnetic displacement current density, minus E dot all the electric currents, the embraced electric currents, which is coming from sources, like an antenna, for example, and the conduction current, which is equal to sigma E, and the displacement current, which is equal to partial d partial t. Now we have a vector identity that's h dot curl e minus e dot curl h. This is a scalar. Curl e is a vector. Then when you did you take a dot product with h, you get a scalar. Curl h is a vector. When you take a dot product with e, you get a scalar. When you subtract them, you get a scalar. The difference be between these two uh, using a vector identity is equal to the divergence of e cross h. So wh what we can do. At any point in space, take the cross product between E and H. This will give you a vector. When you take its divergence, you get a scalar. So divergence of E cross H is equal to the right-hand side, which is still uh, a magnetic field strength dot magnetic displacement current minus electric field strength dot all the electric currents. The embraced the electric current coming from sources, conduction electric current, which is equal to sigma E, where sigma is a conductivity, and the displacement electric current, which is equal to partial D partial T. Now, what we'll do now, we'll move by assuming we're talking about the specific volumes. We assume there is a specific volume, and we assume inside this source, I have my embraced current. This is the source of all this energy. This is the source. It can be an antenna. It can be some other source of creating energy, but this is the source of my energy. And this electromagnetic energy will start to, to radiate through space will start to go through space. So we'd like to drive the expression for the different powers here. So how would you, you proceed? The, the integrate both sides here over that volume. We have a certain volume. It's, it's a volume. It's, it is surrounded by a closed surface. Okay. 
So what we can do, they simply integrate both sides here over that volume, and then they apply, the, apply diversion theorem. So instead of integrating over the volume of this quantity, they integrate over the service of uh, cur uh, E dot curl H itself. So now let's see how this is done. So integrating over the volume, we make a certain volume in space, we integrate all these quantities, and then we use the diversion theorem which converts a volume integral to a service integral to replace this integral here which is divergence of e cross h to the service integral of e cross h dot s now this this one ha every term here has a meaning every term here has a meaning um, let's go over them one by one e cross h I explained to you uh, in one of the lectures that in electromagnetic waves e and h are normal to one another and the direction normal to them is the direction of wave propagation so this here is the direction of wave propagation. So this equation really, uh, this is in um, volt per meter, this ampere per meter. So this quantity here has units of watts per meter squared. It's a power density vector. It's power density quantity. And they call it the pointing vector. So its direction is the direction of wave propagation and its uh, units is in watts per meter squared. When you integrate this over the service, this gives you the power leaving the service. So now we have a situation where there is a volume, you have a volume, there is current source inside, it's creating fields, electric and magnetic, and we have certain power leaving that service. The power leaving the service is the integral over the service of B dot dS, where P is the pointing vector, is E cross H, it has units of watts per meter squared. So when you integrate it over the complete service, you get watts. Now, we talked before about the other quantity here. We have E dot GI, this one quantity. We have E dot GC, a second quantity. We have E dot GD, a third quantity, and the H dot, G, dot mu D. Now, E dot GI, if you, if you integrate E dot GI, GI is your current source. We know from our study of circuits, when you multiply the voltage uh, across a, a voltage source, by the current going through that source, this gives you the power delivered. So this is what we have here. The power supplied is minus the integral of E dot GI. And this minus integral is taken into account here to give you a, a positive supplied power. So if I move this term to the other side, this will give me the supplied power. Supplied power in the whole volume, you integrate over the whole volume with E dot GI, where GI is impressed the current, the source current. Now, E dot GC, we have already calculated that GC is nothing but sigma E. So, this will give you sigma modulus E squared. I, 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 we talked about the losses, and I told you whenever we have a conductor, in order to get the losses that conductor, we integrate over the volume of sigma modulus E squared. This is still the same even for time varying quantities. Now, we are left with two quantities, E dot GD, and you will see that this is nothing but electric power and the h dot mu d and this is nothing but magnetic power okay and I will explain this to you in the following slide so we already talked about the losses we agreed if you multiply the electric field by the conduction current which is nothing but sigma e you get e dot e which is modulus e squared and we already discussed that and we even had some problem on that now uh, I'll go I'll jump to this part here e dot g d E dot the displacement electric current, displacement electric current is partial D partial T, but D is nothing but epsilon E, so this is epsilon E dot partial E partial T. This quantity here is equal to EX partial EX partial T plus EY partial EY partial T plus EZ partial EZ partial T, but this is equal to one half the derivative of EX squared plus EY squared plus EZ squared relative to T. So I can replace this term here by partial partial t one half modulus e squared. Okay, I would like you to try this yourself. You write e x partial e x partial t plus e y partial e y partial t plus e z partial e z partial t, and you will see that this is exactly the same term that you get if you differentiate e x squared plus e y squared plus e z squared relative to t. So now. This is power, and we know that power is the derivative of energy. So the term inside the derivative is called the electric energy. And this is what we calculated earlier. I asked you, go over the whole volume, 
Calculate model as E squared multiplied by epsilon. Integrate over the whole volume. This will give you the electric energy in that volume. So if you differentiate it relative to time, you get the electric power. The same thing is happening here for the other magnetic term. We have H dot mu D, the displacement magnetic current, which is nothing but partial B partial T. But partial B partial T is nothing but mu partial H partial T. Now this term is equal to HX partial HX partial T plus HY partial HY partial T plus HZ partial HZ partial T. But this is exactly one half the derivative relative to time of hx squared plus hy squared plus hz squared. So I can move par h, h dot partial h partial t and I replace it by the derivative relative to time of one half modulus h squared. Now, this term here is really the magnetic power. But because I have a time derivative and power is the derivative of energy, so the term inside is what we call the magnetic energy. So the magnetic energy is stored in any volume. You can calculate it by going at every point in that volume Calculate modulus h squared, multiplied by mu, divide by 2, and then integrate over the whole volume. Now, if you put all this together, how, the, how does the conservation of power looks? You have a source. This source has a current gi. It created fields E and H. We, we know that now there is, this source gives you supplied power. The supplied power is the integration over the volume of minus E dot this current. So there is a supplied power. Where does this supplied power go? Part of it will leave that volume. So we agreed there is, a, there is a power leaving through the integral of the pointing vector. Also, there is a power dissipated inside the volume, which is this one here, power dissipated. So in that volume, because of finite conductivity, there will be power dissipated. And the rest of the power will be stored in the electric and the magnetic field inside the volume. So the electric power stored is given by this one. Magnetic power stored is given by this one. So we have magnet. This is the derivative of the magnetic energy. This is the derivative of the electric energy. This conservation of power. So whatever electromagnetic energy is supplied inside the volume, part of it will leave the volume. Part of it will get dissipated inside the volume. And the rest will be stored in the electric and the magnetic field. This is exactly what we have in electric circuits. But in an electrical electric circuit, we don't talk about energy leaving the circuit because the circuit is assumed to be isolated from any other circuit. While here, when you have a volume, this volume is connected to the external world, the outside world. So this is why it will start to share its power through the service. So this is, this is called conservation of EM energy and it's a generalization of the conservation of energy in electric circuits. Let's consider one example here. We'd like to calculate the internal inductance of a thick wire of radius A carrying a uniform current I by calculating the magnetic energy. We did solve this problem before, but we solved it using uh, the, uh, the flux and the flux linkage and then we divided the flux linkage by the current. So now we'll, we'll try to get the same expression through the definition of uh, the magnetic energy. So here you have a thick wire. It has a radius A. Current I is, is uniformly distributed through this cross section, circular cross section. It's flowing out from the page. The magnetic field, as we know, will be in the phi direction. We did apply and bear. We said in this problem there is a high degree of symmetry. The field must be in the phi direction. It's only a function of rho. So we selected an Amperian bath, which, lo which looked like uh, a circle. And then we integrated h dot dl. We said it's equal to the current enclosed. h dot dl here will give you h multiplied by the circumference of this circle, which is 2 by rho. The current enclosed inside this circle is a fraction of the total current i. The total current i is flowing through the whole area. So we are getting only a fraction, and the fraction is simply the ratio of this area, which is by rho squared to the total area which is by a squared. So this is why this is the expression coming from Ampere's law. H phi multiplied by 2 by rho is equal to this ratio multiplied by the current. So the, the current enclosed is a fraction of the current i and this fraction is the area inside which is by rho squared over by a squared. If you divide by 2 by rho and simplify you get that the magnetic field in the phi direction is I rho over 2 by A squared. So the magnetic field does a change from one point to another. If you want to calculate the total energy stored inside this 
thick conductor, what you have to do, you have to integrate this quantity squared, the modulus of h squared, multiplied by mu over 2 over the volume. This is the definition of the magnetic energy. And of course, when we talk about time varying quantities, its derivative will be the magnetic power. So we start to do our integration of h squared. Luckily, h has only one component, which is h phi. So modulus h squared will be simply h phi squared. So this is here h phi squared. I squared that. You get here a to the power 4 in the denominator. Uh, I took mu out. I'm integrating over the volume of, the, of this thick conductor, which looks like a cylinder. So I'll integrate rho from 0 to a, phi from 0 to 2 by, z from 0 up to l, where l is the length of the conductor. dv for cylindrical coordinates is rho d rho d phi dz. Uh, there is nothing here that's function of phi or z, so I can simply multiply by 2 by, and I simply multiply by l. And I can take this one out, and then I integrate only relative to rho. The integral of rho cubed will give us rho to the power 4. You put a, you get a to the power 4, will cancel with this a. Uh, 1 over 4, and you have here 4, 4, another 4, you get 16. Pi will cancel with pi, 2 will cancel with 2. So you get that the total magnetic energy stored inside this, this thick conductor is mu i squared L over 16 pi. Now, from the definition of the inductance, I mentioned the one we talked about inductance, that one possible definition of inductance is that L is equal to double the magnetic energy divided by the current squared. So we can use that, so we can divide, multiply this term by 2 and divide by I squared to get the inductance. So when you do that, you get the inductance due to the field inside the conductor. It's 2 W magnetic, 2 multiplied by the magnetic energy divided by the current squared. This is the magnetic energy and then I divide it by, by the current squared you'll see that it's mu L over 8 pi Henry. And if you want to get the inductance per unit length, you divide by L as well, so you get mu over 8 pi. And we got this value exactly before using the uh, definition of the flux and the flux linkage.